So everyone, as you can see by the title and thumbnail of this video, this is gonna be all about Stage Manager. So whatever questions you have, this is gonna be the video that's gonna answer it, whether it's does it work in clamshell mode? How does audio work with Stage Manager? Can you use multiple displays with Stage Manager? Does it work with universal control? So this video is gonna answer all of those questions. We're gonna go over not only all the main stuff with Stage Manager, but also all the different nuances and the little things that I've noticed after using it now for a few months, and also the fact that Apple brought back extended monitor support, we're gonna to touch on that as well. So without further ado, let's talk all things Stage Manager. Let's get it. So the first section of this video, we're gonna talk purely about Stage Manager, the actual feature itself on the iPad. Now Stage Manager will be compatible with a few different iPads. Apple did bring it to more iPads than just the M1. So if you see your iPad on this list, then you'll be able to use Stage Manager physically on your iPad. Now, if you have any other iPad, iPad mini, you know, the new iPad 10 generation, even an older iPad Air that is in the M1 version, then it will not have it. And the main reason is because of the updated GPUs in the M1, M2, and then also the A12X and A12Z. And then also the virtual memory swap, which is happening on the M1 and M2 does help greatly with Stage Manager. And then when we talk about extended monitor support, only M1 enabled iPads will be able to use extended monitor. So that includes the iPad Air with M1 and then obviously the M1 and the M2 iPad Pros. But now that we got all that out of the way, let's talk about Stage Manager and get down and dirty with the iPad. Let's get into this video. So just to so let you guys know, we are using the new M2 iPad Pro to demo all of this. But again, if you have one of the relevant iPads that I mentioned earlier, you should be able to do everything that I'm doing currently. So the first thing I do want to show off is actually just the settings of Stage Manager. So if you go into settings and you go down to home screen and multitasking, and I am using a mouse right now just to let you guys know, the only real menu option that we have of Stage Manager is down here in the home screen and multitasking section where you can turn it off and on. So Stage Manager lets you work with your favorite apps all arranged in a single view, use multiple overlapping windows at once and resize windows to different sizes. So we go in here, you can turn it on and you can also actually turn it off, turn it off and on from your control center, which is this little icon right here. So there it's off, now it's turned on. And the only real settings that you have and only thing that you can customize is how much of the actual screen you want these windows to take up. So right now I'm gonna leave this on, but I'll show you guys what it looks like once we turn it off. So let's go back to the home page and let's just start opening up some applications. So if I open up Safari, you can see that it opens up like as a single window. I can resize it, I can move it around, and you can see that the actual dock is showing by default. So if the window is the correct size, then the dock will show up. And just to bring another window up, I'll just drag Twitter over here, and then you can see that Twitter will overlap that original one because it thinks, hey, since you're opening Twitter now, you probably wanna use Twitter now also. And in terms of how many windows you can have open at the same time, you can have up to four different windows open. So let's say I wanna open up Google Maps or Apple Maps right here, which I never really use. And then I wanna open up, let's say my photo library. That is four windows that are open at the same time. And you can see that you can actually resize them from any direction. So you can resize them up and down on the Y axis. You can resize them left and right on the X axis. And then you can diagonally resize them as well. And you can see that there's a little button right here or kind of a little indicator to let you know that this is the best way to do it. Now, if you have a mouse and a trackpad, you can resize it from anywhere, but if you are using it by touch first, you're gonna to wanna to use this little section to actually move it up and down and make sure it's resized correctly. And you can see that it's snapping into certain grids. So it's not like a normal desktop operating system where you can resize it to any size that you want. You can see that it's kind of moving into different grids and it's moving stuff around behind it to fit into that grid. So I guess Apple maybe decided on a few, maybe 20 or so different sizes that these apps can be in and then that's what they're sticking with because again, they're trying to make it as easy as possible for developers to develop for this. So they give you different sizes that they would already create for let's say an iOS size and an iPad size. It makes it a lot easier to move around and to develop for it. So I consider these apps that have two different views, kind of like the iPhone view, and then it, once it gets big enough, it goes into the iPad view. So you can see with Twitter as my example, I'm in the iPhone view because there's no sidebar. I'm still in the iPhone view. If I make it bigger, and now I have this left-hand bar, which now I consider to be in the I iPad view. And the bigger it goes, then I can actually see this right here. And if you want to go full, full screen, you can still go full screen by pulling it all the way down to the right-hand corner. And you are full screen, even though Stage Manager is on. And if you want to go back, you just grab this and make it smaller again. So those that's how you resize windows. And that is how you actually go from full screen to making it as small as possible. And if you guys want to see how small it goes, this is as small as something like, let's say, Twitter goes. And it does work with a trackpad, with a mouse pad, and with a roller, as you can see. And then when it comes to interacting with each window, if you are hovering your mouse over that window, then you can interact with it. Same thing with this one. Even though Twitter is overlapping Safari, I can still scroll through Safari because my mouse is over that window. Same thing goes with photos. And then if I want to go here, 
And then Maps works a little differently because you can't really scroll, you have to pinch and zoom to do stuff. So depending on which app you're using will allow you to actually scroll and interact with the app without actually having it on the forefront of your applications. So now let's see what happens when you add a fifth application because you can see that we have four applications. You can move this one. We have the actual Photos app and then we have the Maps application here. So if I try to open up the Notes application, it'll actually kick one of those applications to the actual app shelf over here on the left hand side. And it's gonna move your least used application or the one that you opened up the last. So this was the first one that I put in there. So it's the first one that goes out. So it's first one in, first one out, just like any other application would. And then once I have that open, it does work with inertia. So I can just kind of move over and then this starts to pop over. So if I wanna move an app into that app shelf, I just grab the application from the top side and move it over here and now I'm in the app shelf. So from a numbers perspective, you can have up to four applications open in one view. And then in the shelf, you, you can have four more instances of four more apps. So if you really, really think about it and you wanna take it to the limit, you can have four sets of four apps on the left-hand side ready to go, so that's 16, and then another four working while you're actually on your screen. So you can have up to 20 applications running simultaneously on any iPad that's using Stage Manager. So the next thing I do wanna talk about is these three little buttons up here. So every application that you have floating around in Stage Manager, will have these three nav buttons. So these nav buttons are exactly what they sound like. They're to navigate through Stage Manager, and it's really helpful if you are using touch first. But again, I'm using a mouse and it's still relatively helpful. But if I tap on here, you get a few options. You have the ability to go full screen, you can add another window of Safari, you can minimize, and you can move to the upper display. We do have a display connected right now, but we'll touch on that in a little bit. And you can completely close out the app. So let's go through each one of these. If I go full screen, very self-explanatory, it goes full screen. And then if I tap on here, you can't actually make it smaller again. You have to actually physically move it. So there it is, it goes smaller. So if we click on the three buttons and then add another window, basically what that does is it pulls up your multitasking and then you can grab any one of these applications, click on it, and then it'll bring that application into the window. So keep that in mind. It's not to add another instance of Safari, it's to bring in an already open application into this instance of your four applications. Then I'll click on those three dots, and if I want to minimize, it does the same thing but the opposite. So if I minimize, it takes it to the app shelf. And if I grab this right here and press close, it'll just close out the app completely. So if I go into multitasking, Notes is no longer there. So it's almost like quitting and deleting the app entirely. And then when it comes to shortcuts, you can actually still use your shortcuts. So if I control tab, you can use tab. And one thing that I did want to show off with Safari is that if you have multiple tabs open, let's say I have ESPN here, I have Apple on the other one, I can actually grab this and pull it out and then have another instance of Safari working just like it would work on desktop with multiple tabs in Safari. So now you can see here that we have multiple Safari applications. And then also if you go down here to the Safari application and you long press, you should be able to add a new tab into Safari and then pull this one out as well. Make sure you're in some open section. And now I have three instances of Safari, which is beautiful to see. And I can start to manipulate and move stuff around. Some other smaller things that I did want to mention with Stage Manager is, let's talk about audio real quick. So when it comes to audio in a normal desktop experience, technically you can have as many audio sources playing at the same time and the speaker will just play whatever's coming out of the audio. So for instance, you can have a YouTube video playing, you can have Spotify playing, you can be editing a video. And if all three of those are playing and the volume is on on all three of those, then all three of those will come out of a speaker. But with Stage Manager and with iPadOS, that's different. So for instance, here I have an ad playing and if I go to my LumaFusion and I press play on LumaFusion, it'll pause the actual play on the YouTube video to then go to LumaFusion. Now this is a very similar situation to iOS. So let's say you're on Spotify on iOS and then you open up a YouTube video, iOS will stop playing Spotify and then start playing YouTube. So the same thing applies to iPadOS. You can only have one audio track playing at once with iPadOS. Another smaller nuance that I did wanna bring up that people have asked me on Twitter, if you guys do wanna follow me on Twitter, it'll be right here in the description. But if you do want to open up the camera, the camera app actually does open in Stage Manager view. The only thing that's kind of weird about it is that it only has two real views. But you can see that's my reflection and I can actually actually reverse it. So hello, hello. But if you do make it smaller, you can resize it. But then it thinks you're in a different orientation. So the camera is a little bit wonky when it comes to Stage Manager. I don't know if that's just because I'm on 16.2 beta. Let me know in the comments down below if you're on 16.1, the public release, because the public release is out to everybody. If you are on 16.1 and this is happening to you, let me know. But just know that Stage Manager and the camera app do work together as long as you have it on this view. And then some other things to take into account is that yes, you can actually move files in between applications just like you would with any other file management system. So here on the left-hand side, I have the Photos application. Here on the right-hand side, I have the Files app. I can grab this photo, drag and drop it. It'll drop directly into that Files application very seamlessly, very easily. 
and there it is right there. So it works exactly how you would think it would. It transfers very, very quickly. So if you have a lot of file management that you need to do, let's say you have videos in your camera roll that you wanna to move to an external drive, I do that all the time and Stage Manager does help a lot with that. And then in terms of apps that don't work with Stage Manager, I haven't really found any. At first, there was an application that I would use called Affinity Photo, which would not actually open in Stage Manager view. But now you can see that I can resize it, move it around. So even apps like this that were a little bit limited now work with Stage Manager. Now, this is an example of an app that doesn't have all the different free forms that you would have with something like Twitter. And the reason is because Affinity Photo is only an iPad app versus something like Twitter. Twitter is an iPad and an iOS app. So it has multiple views. So you have your iPhone view and then your iPad view versus Affinity Photo, since it's only an iPadOS app and not an iPhone app, you can only view it in an iPadOS fashion. So it's still resizable to a certain extent, but you can't go any smaller than, than let's say this right here. Okay, everyone, so now let's get into Stage Manager but on extended monitor support. Now I did mention that extended monitor only works with M1 enabled iPads. Let's plug this in and see how long it actually takes to actually turn on. Now, just for context, I am using a 27 inch 4K monitor. You said it turned on relatively quickly. I was using before a 44 inch ultra wide 1080p monitor, which was giving me a little bit of trouble. But again, that was an early iteration of iPadOS 16. Now we are running 16.2 beta one. And also keep in mind that I am on 16.2. Apple did remove extended monitor support for the public release of 16.1, but it will come out with 16.2, which should release at the end of November. So depending on when you're watching this, it might still be in beta or it might be released to the public by this point. But the extended monitor support is exactly what it sounds like. An additional canvas up here to completely work kind of in its own little silo. So if I open up something in Safari over here, it works extremely well. It works exactly like Stage Manager was working on the actual iPad itself, but now it's just on a bigger screen and you can use up the entire screen. And my main use for this is actually with LumaFusion. So if I pull up LumaFusion, I can grab LumaFusion and go full screen with LumaFusion, which is something that I was not able to do before. And I can use the trackpad, so everything is moving seamlessly, and it's a 4K display, so it makes it very, very color accurate. I don't know, it's just a great way to actually use, finally, the full screen and not be letterboxed in like we were for so many years. But the same thing applies. You can have up to four different shelves over here with four apps in each one. I can grab one of these and move it over here. You just have more screen real estate. And for the most part, it will work with any size display. Like I said, I used it with a 44 inch display. And even though it was early on and it was a little bit glitchy, it still, when it worked, it still worked extremely well. So I still full screened on a 44 inch ultra wide, but now I'm just on a 27 inch with a better aspect ratio. But some questions I did want to answer when it comes to secondary monitor support. First off, does it work in clamshell mode? No, it does not. And I'll show you. So if I close this, the whole screen goes black and I have to open up and unlock the iPad again. Another thing to take into consideration is audio when it does come to using an external monitor. So right now I am plugged in via USB-C, via Thunderbolt actually, to the back of this display. So by default, it will only shoot audio out of the secondary audio source. So if your monitor does not have a speaker system, then no audio will come out. You will need to Bluetooth audio to whatever you want to show off. So again, you cannot, for some reason right now, you cannot default to the iPad speakers because the iPad speakers themselves are amazing. But if you are connected to a secondary display, there is literally zero way to use your built-in iPad speakers for audio. You have to either use the audio that's on your monitor itself or use you know something like a HomePod or AirPods or some other Bluetooth speaker to get audio out if you don't want to use the built-in speakers on your monitor. And that same idea applies that only one audio source will be playing at one time. Another question that I do want to talk about is, does it work with multiple monitors? So if I go into my settings and I go to display and brightness, you actually see that we have a new little menu for that secondary display. So this is the secondary display right here. If I click on it, we have a few options. So we have display zoom, so we can change how much is on the screen. We can go with the HDR route, the SDR route, which is the most compatible, which I like to keep it on, and then allow display mode changes. When this is on, the display mode will change to match the dynamic range and the frame rate of the content you're viewing. I always leave that on, but can it work with multiple monitors? And the answer is no. Even though there is an arrangement panel, which is exactly what it's for, it's only to tell you how you want to arrange it. So if I want to orientate my iPad, you know, on another section or around the actual display itself, I can do that, but you cannot add more than one monitor. That is just a situation we're in. So get yourself the biggest screen that you can get for the iPad Pro. And then if you can see, I have an iPad over here. This is the 2021 M1 iPad. And I was hoping that maybe you could use universal control or continue to use it, but unfortunately you cannot. So it's not compatible with universal control. You can't use multiple iPads for multiple screens. 
It's just one iPad with one external monitor. And then another thing I did want to bring up is that sadly, continuity camera does not work with iPad OS. So if you want to use your iPhone camera as your main camera, as your webcam for the iPad, you cannot do that. Continuity camera only works between iOS and Mac OS. But one more thing I did want to show off is that I want to actually see in real time if the camera will open on the secondary display and actually show off exactly what's going on. But as you can see, it doesn't actually work. So if I want to use the camera, on the secondary display, it kind of breaks everything and doesn't work, so let's quit out of that. And if you see some things that just don't really make sense or don't fit, it is because we probably are on beta one, so it's not perfect. Again, we're still in the beta program. If you guys do wanna try it out, it has been extremely stable in my experience, but it still is in beta, so I don't want people to come to me when something bad happens, say like, hey, Fernando recommended that we try out secondary display support. But that is pretty much what we have when it comes to Stage Manager and secondary display support. You know, it's very familiar. Stage Manager is a little bit different. It takes a little bit to get used to it. But once you do get used to it, it is a godsend when it comes to somebody like myself who wants to use the iPad Pro as their main computer. But let's finish up this video, get out of this view, and talk about our final thoughts. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like we saw, Stage Manager, in my opinion, is still an upgraded feature set that we had in the previous versions, right? The split screen view was great for a lot of people, but especially if you have a 12.9 inch iPad, you wanna be able to use more than just two and then three applications when you have the two side by side and the slide over. So Stage Manager does allow for that. Now, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. The floating windows you definitely need to get used to because it's not the same as the floating windows on a Mac OS or Windows computer. It's a little bit different, but you do get to use four different applications at once and even get a fifth one in there if you are using something like Picture in Picture with YouTube. So we're definitely taking strides into the iPad being able to be used as a real computer for more people than just like myself because I am that person that uses their iPad as their main computer, but there is a learning curve and not a lot of people wanna go through that learning curve to use the iPad versus something a lot more familiar like a Mac OS computer. But with things like extended monitor support, with things like Stage Manager, it will make it a little bit easier. It's just, you have to figure out how it works in your workflow and you have to be willing to try it out. But my personal thoughts is that I'm very happy with Stage Manager, especially from my workflow. Some situations where it has helped improve my productivity are for instance, when I'm exporting a LumaFusion file, I used to not be able to leave the LumaFusion app to, let's say, go edit a thumbnail while it's ex exporting and rendering. So now I'm able to have that exporting in the background and then still go and do something else, maybe go on Twitter or edit a thumbnail or even watch a video, which is something that I could not do before without Stage Manager. And then also secondary monitor support is great especially if you have a 4K monitor with a good aspect ratio. So leave some comments down below what you guys think about Stage Manager and extended monitor support. I know it's kind of sad that it didn't come to more iPads and you do have to shell out a pretty penny. Right now, the cheapest way to get extended monitor support is with that $600 M1 iPad Air. And even then, it's only 64 gigs. So definitely keep that in mind. But overall, if you do have an M1 iPad, if you do have an iPad Pro and you want to try out Stage Manager and extended monitor support, by all means, go for it because it's very, very beneficial in my opinion. But that's going to do it for this video, everybody. If you did enjoy, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end. And hopefully this video was helpful to answer any questions that you had about Stage Manager because it's not a perfect one-to-one -one experience when you compare Mac OS to iPad OS in this desktop-like experience. But like I said, leave some comments down below if you have any more questions. I will be there in the comments to answer these questions. But if you guys want to watch some more Mac OS, iPad OS, or iOS videos, click on one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace, everybody. Let's get to a million subs here soon, everybody. Click that sub button. Peace.